Joining us now to talk more about Karen Vergata and the larger picture of the Gilgo Beach murders is former FBI Special Agent and News Nation's Law and Justice contributor Jennifer Coffendaffer. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I know as a former FBI Special Agent and Law and Justice contributor, you have worked in this space for a while. Jennifer, when we talk about this DNA, helping them to determine the identity of Ms. Vergata, why is that in so, so important and how is it that they're able to use that information to possibly exclude or include her in the murders of those connected with the Gilgo Beach uh, suspect? Well, first of all, Nick, it's so important because you cannot start an investigation unless you really understand who that victim was. Once you have a victim name, you can look back and you can find so much more information, which law enforcement already has. They've identified where she worked, which was not far from where Rex Hurman worked. They found out what industry she was in, which was the same industry type worker that Rex Hewerman liked to associate with and liked to victimize. Also, the age is very interesting. Fairly young female in her 30s. So all of this information helps law enforcement either connect Rex Hewerman to her death or another individual. When we have information like this uh, come forward, um, is it commonplace in Jennifer to um, try and revisit other open cases and other missing victims and see if they're tied to the suspect that you may have in custody? Well, certainly. And when you look at the place these individuals were all buried or discarded, that proximity already makes a tie-in with each individual. In this case, in 1996, recall, they found her lower extremities and they were bound. Uh, so I think that's very interesting because we know that at least with the Gilgo three, that they were also bound. And that's very similar in terms of modus operandi. Uh, Jennifer, there are uh, 10 Gilgo Beach victims whose remains have been found, but Rex Hurman has been charged with killing only three of them and also named as a suspect in the fourth. Do you think it's likely he'll eventually be connected to some of the other victims uh, like Karen Vergata? And, and if so, why or why not? I think it is very likely he will be. And I base that on the fact that uh, it's similar in terms of how these crimes were committed, where the bodies were left, also the binding process, also the nature of each of those victims, uh, all being female. We have one small child and we have one man who was a uh, uh, dressed as a woman. Uh, so you have these similarities that draw a person to think that it could be the same serial killer. If not, we could be looking at another serial killer, Nick, which is also very scary because he's not in custody. And then possibly dumping bodies in the same area. That would really be frightening. Uh, Jennifer, one last question before I let you go. Karen Vergata's remains were found in 1996, but they weren't confirmed as hers until this week. Can you explain why it's, it's such a long process to figure out whose remains they were if they had this DNA? Well, in part, 1996, there wouldn't have been the DNA advancements to use the mitochondrial mm -hmm. DNA connection to actually conduct uh, genealogy studies and connect that DNA to uh, somebody else in her family, which is how they ultimately were able to identify her. Recall also 2011, her skull was found. Now, because this task force only recently started up, are we seeing true advancements in terms of identification of these victims? Thank goodness, Nick, for this task force. Uh, Jennifer Coffin-Deffer, thank you so much for joining us and breaking that down. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.